Good morning and welcome to Washington National Cathedral. My name's Randy Hollerith, and it's a pleasure to have you with us for this brief service of morning prayer. I hope that today, wherever you are, that you are safe and sound and well. Let us begin. Watch, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our collect for today. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Our lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 21st chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven? or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Here ends the lesson. In our reading for this morning, Jesus has just cleansed the temple. That's the part that takes place right before our reading this morning. He's thrown out the money changers and turned over the tables and made quite a scene. And so now he's in the temple, and the chief priests and the elders, they come to him, and they want to know, what gives him the right, the authority to do what he's doing? As always, you see this tension that Jesus has between the religious authorities and his ministry. The religious authorities are trying to protect the religion, whereas Jesus is always trying to awaken them to the deep truth of the faith. Now that's an important distinction. There is a difference between religion and our faith, and we should never confuse the two. There's a great quote that I love from Bono of U2 fame who said, sometimes religion gets in the way of God. And it's so true, isn't it? Sometimes religion gets in the way of God. God is quite separate from our religion. Our religion is put together by human beings. And just like the, uh, the leaders and the priests of Jesus' day, oh, we human beings are sinful creatures. And we take the wonderful revelations that we get from God, the great deep truths that God shares with us, and we twist them and we turn them and we layer in levels of politics and we just generally mess it all up. And oftentimes people will shy away from the Christian faith because they see the Christian faith 
and the fragility and imperfection of the church as the same thing. But they're not the same thing. The church is at its best the body of Christ in the world, but the church is also broken, just like we are all broken. The faith, the words of Jesus, what his life and his ministry teaches us, that is pure and special and wonderful. Our job as Christians is to have our religion and our practice as Christians mirror as closely as possible the actual words and life of Jesus. So when it seems that religion is getting in the way of God, remember that religion is imperfect. We do our best. Sometimes we fail. But that our God is with us and that when push comes to shove, if we pick up those New Testament passages and read them and mark and learn and inwardly digest them, as the prayer book says, then we will know and understand how best to follow Christ. Amen. Won't you join with me as we pray together the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful and understanding and healing Lord, I bring before you and pray for those who are sick or sad or lonely or scared. Those who have lost their way or their dignity or their faith their integrity or their independence. I pray for those who are depressed or stuck or broke or homeless. I pray for those who are out of work, hungry or unwanted. I pray for those who are abused, uncared for, ignored, angry, or just plain desperate. I pray for those who are facing death. I pray both for them and with them. Hand in hand, heart with heart, we cry out to you. Please, Lord, refocus our pain and our fear. Hear us, hold us, help us, heal us. Deepen our faith in you so we can handle whatever it is to be our lot today, with more courage and less worry, with more confidence and grace. I pray for those I know well and for those I cannot remember and for those I do not know. And I pray for me. Accept our cries and pleas on behalf of those whom we now offer up in prayer. Forgive us for asking for what we want right now. We know that you will give us what we need for the longer pull. But please, dear Lord, just stick with us. Hang on to us. Hold us tight. Touch our wounds. Ease our pain. Calm our fears. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen.